Hey, we're going to review water budgets in case you needed a quick refresher on what we did in class today. A water budget, just like a household financial budget, um, incorporates the amount of income, which would be paychecks in the case of money, and then the amount of expenditures, which would be your bills and whatever you buy at the store. Uh, in the case of water budget, you have precipitation, which is the income, and you have evaporation and transpiration, which is the expenditures. Hydrologists use water budgets to determine the general climate of an area, but then they also use it to predict droughts and flooding. The abbreviation for precipitation is the letter P. That's going to be the amount of the equivalent of income. Um, it's the amount of water that falls each month. Potential evapotranspiration is the amount of water that could be evaporated if it were there, or transpirated by plants if it were there. This is different from actual evapotranspiration, which we're going to see a slide on in a minute. Potential means that, well, let's take the Mojave Desert. The Mojave Desert is hot and it's dry. The potential for evapotranspiration there is gigantic. A lot of water would evaporate very quickly in the desert if it were there, but it's not there. So potential evapotranspiration is high. Actual evapotranspiration is low in a desert. Storage refers to the amount of water we're going to store in the soil. It's the equivalent of the bank. Only this bank, you can't put more than 100 millimeters of water in, and you could never go below zero. If you run out of water, you run out of water. We have a monthly change in storage, or a monthly change in the amount of money we have in the bank. Actual evapotranspiration I already covered. Deficit. A deficit refers to when there's not enough water to meet the needs of potential evapotranspiration. So when storage goes to zero and there's still more bills to pay, then we have a deficit. Similarly, you could have a surplus. When your storage reaches 100 and more water is trying to go in, that's called a surplus. You can't put it in. Okay, so here's how we're going to make the table. We're going to start out with information from some reference source. It's going to include the precipitation, and it's going to include the potential evapotranspiration. Precipitation can be measured directly month to month, and potential evapotranspiration has a huge equation that you can look up online if you want to. We're just going to get it from the source. So we're just going to take this information, and we're going to copy it directly onto our table. At the end, total up the monthly. So this is for Schenectady. Um, you have this grid on your paper, so fill this out. You've got all these numbers and then potential evapotranspiration. You're just, again, copying it. Please total it when you're done. The next row is precipitation minus potential evapotranspiration. So 61 minus 0 is 61. 56 minus 0 is 56, and so forth. I'm just going to go across the row. We don't need to total this row. Now we've got this problem. We've got this change in storage and storage, and there's not really a good way to start. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a number. I'm going to pick 50. We're going to end up having to do this twice to get the actual number. But we're going to start with 50, and I'll just say there's no change in storage. It doesn't matter. We're going to fix that later anyway. So if I start with 50, and I try to add... 56. So I've got 56 precipitation. I've got no evapotranspiration. So I'm adding 56 to this system. Now my storage cannot go above 100. So I'm going to try to add 56. I can't add a full 56 because I can only go to 100. So 50 plus 50 is 100. So that's how much I'm actually adding to storage is 50 to get me up to 100. Now the next month March. I'm going to try and add 69 minus 1 is 68. I can't. I can't add anything because I'm already at 100. So my change in storage is 0 and I've got 100. April. I'm going to try and add 42. But I can't. My storage is already at 100. May. Now I've got numbers on the decrease. I've got 76 precipitation and more, 84, potential evapotranspiration. So now I'm withdrawing $8 from the mix. So I can do that because my bank account's flush with money or water. 
So I've got minus 8, and then that's going to bring me down to 92 in storage. In June, I'm going to take out 24. And that's going to bring me down to 68. And then in July, so I'm going to actually subtract 51, and that's going to leave me with 17. Now, August, I run into a problem. I need to take 40 out, but I don't have 40 in storage. I can only take what's in storage. If you go to the bank with a withdrawal slip for $40 and you only have 17 in your bank account, you're only going to get 17 out of the bank. So I'm going to do minus 17, and that's going to bring me down to zero. Now, in the month of September, I'm going to add three. Hooray, I'm making money again. I'm up to three in my bank account. Okay, and then October, I'm going to add 27, and that brings me up to 30. And then I'm going to add 60, and that brings me up to 90. Hooray! And then in December, I'm going to add 61, but wait. I can't add 61. My storage is 90. I can't go above, above 100, so I can only add 10 to bring myself up to 100. Now, I said before, we're going to have to redo the beginning here. Because after the month of December comes the month of January. Now, if I have 100 in storage in December, and I try to add 61 in January, what happens? Nothing. My storage goes to 100, but I have no change. In February, I try to add 56, but I can't because there's no room. And now I'm at 100. I try to add 68, and I can't. So I'm back, and now it's set. You can start with any number here, but you're going to have to go through and do like a year and a half or something like that to get your final number. See, this is now stable. I could continue going round and round, and these numbers will stay the same. Now, our next row, EA. EA is going to be equal to EP unless storage goes to zero. So for every month, except for August, I'm just going to fill in the EP number. You hear that weird noise in the background? That's some transformer toy of my child's. And I don't know what it's doing, but it's transforming back and forth, and there's no children around. So that's a little scary. Okay, let's go back to August. Now, to calculate EP for a month where storage is zero, I'm going to do precipitation plus storage from the month before. So I've got 84 plus 17 gives me 101. So that's going to be my EA for the month of August. And it's different than every other. Every other month, EP and EA are the same. In August, EA and EP are different. Then I'm going to total that. Now I've got deficits and surpluses. You can only have a deficit if your storage is zero. So August is the only month we can have a deficit. Deficit is going to be EP minus EA. So 124 minus 101 gives me 23. And that's the only month I'm going to have a deficit. So I'm just going to fill in my total for 23. You can leave these blank, or you can fill them in with zeros. Surplus row. Surplus, you can only have a surplus when storage is equal to 100. So I have a surplus from the month of December through April. So I don't need to worry about the other months. Now surplus is going to be calculated P minus EP minus the change in storage. So 61 minus 0 minus 0 is 61. In February, 56 minus 0 minus 0 is 56. And March, 69 minus 1 minus 0 68. And then in April, you've got 76 minus 34 minus 0 is 42. May, June, July, August, September, October, November are blank. Now I get over to December. In December, my surplus is going to be 61 minus 0 minus 10. Excuse me, 51. And then I'm going to tally that up, and I'm going to get 278. So that's how you fill out the table. Now your next step is on the grid below is going to be fill out or create a graph 
a three-line graph where one line is the precipitation row, one line is potential evapotranspiration, and the third line is actual evapotranspiration. So it's going to be a three-line graph. Try to do it in three colors. If you have any questions, ask me in class. Good luck.